Hello, everybody, and welcome to another Get a Life Moment with myself, Lisa Davies. And I am delighted today to be joined by Penny Bryan from Penny Your Coach, who is a relationship coach and an author. Welcome, Penny. Thank you, Lisa. Good to be here. Lovely. So, um, as I ask all of my guests, let's start with understanding a little bit about you. Who is Penny Bryant? So um, Penny Bryant is um, a relationship coach. Um, she um, is somebody who is living her life, learning every day and growing every day and sharing that information with other women. Mm. So is it predominantly women that you work with now? Yes, it is women that I work with because it's based on my own personal story. So that's why um, I feel a real passion about helping women. Mm -hmm. And what is that story then? So how did you get to this place? What's been the journey for you to get to be supporting other women on their own journey? Okay, so um, it's my whole life story, really. Um, didn't have the best of upbringings. Um, but my mum used to take me to see um, pictures you know, at the cinema. And um, I used to love Cinderella and, um, you know, all those fairy tales. So I bought into, um, if I was a good girl, one day my prince would come and mm. I would live happily ever after. So at 19, um, I thought my prince had come mm. um, and I was going to live happily ever after. And then reality kicked in. Um, and it's my journey about having discovering and learning and growing and healing through that marriage because it was it was a particularly difficult marriage mm. um, but I do believe that you bring into relationships things that you haven't dealt with your past anyway so that was the place for me to do that so I um we went to relate because we were struggling mm -hmm. he didn't want to engage but I was like really on fire about understanding myself um, learning all these things, you know, about understanding what's going on in my life and what I can do to help myself. Um, eventually, the marriage um, ended. I ended the marriage after 35 years. <clears throat> and um, because I'd, I'd learned to get stronger in myself and to understand myself and know that I wanted more from life, that this wasn't mm. the life that I was in. I didn't want any more. I wanted more. Um, and then I got the opportunity to um, go on a free coaching weekend which I did and absolutely fell in love with it and knew, you know, I always say is um, it's never too late. Mm. Um, and I finally found out, you know, quite late in, on in life, this is what I want to do. This is what I meant to do. This is why I'm here. You know, this is why I've gone through everything I've gone through in my life to come to this point, to, to train, to be a coach and then to help other women. So that's my, my journey. So I, I do that now. I've been doing that for about five years mm. um, and um, remarried, happily remarried. And I'm now living the life that I want to live, which is great. Yeah. I mean, 35 years is a very, very long time from a really early age, isn't it? Uh, and I can I can resonate with with parts of that story myself. But it takes a lot of courage, doesn't it? After 35 years to kind of say, you know what? I, I want more from my life. And do you find that the people that you work with are in similar scenarios where they kind of wake up one morning thinking, what am I doing with my life? What, you know, is this all there is? Yeah, definitely. I, I think, um, you know, we, we, we get married, we have children um, and suddenly life isn't how we thought it was going to be. You know, we mm. suddenly think, well, I, I don't remember signing up for this, you know, <laughs> this is not how, how it's meant to be. Um, so I work with um, women who, um, you know, have got children in a relationship, trying to run their own business or, or work, and they're spinning so many plates. Yeah. Um, that they just, you know, they, they just get to the point, I've just had enough, I'm fed up with this. Um, mm. And there is a different way. And I help them understand also that it's about our conditioning as we're growing up. Yeah. Especially, especially as women. I mean, it's a very patriarch society. Now, I'm not against men. I love men. I love my husband. I love my sons. I love my grandsons. But we live in a very patriarch society um, that works against women, I believe. And I think there are things that we believe and we act out because we don't understand that that's actually how we've been kind of conditioned. Um, so it's getting them to see 
things in a different way, you know, and quite often some of the women I've worked with, because they've found their voice and they've understood and they've stepped into their own power, their relationship improves anyway, which is fantastic, mm. you know. Um, so it's all about them learning to love themselves, understand themselves, forgive themselves, and, you know, know that they have a life that they, that they can live if they choose to step into that. But it, as you say, it is, it, 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 I mean, for me, ending my marriage, it wasn't a brave act. It was at the point where I'd got to, I can't take this anymore. Mm. I, I woke up one morning thinking, oh my God, 35 years, I could, I don't want to do another 35. Yeah. I need yeah. to get out. Um, so um, what is that saying? Um, you bring about change by inspiration or intervention, is it? I forget what the mm. term is, but I, I, I just, yeah, it was just like, I can't take anymore. I've got to go. So even though I'd worked very hard, you know, at trying to make everything work. So I think a lot of women stay in marriages because they've got children. And, and I understand that because I did the same thing. Um, I, I grew up without my dad, so I didn't want the same for my children. So I, mm. so sometimes it's a play. Sometimes it's about finding, um, being in a place that perhaps you're not hundred percent happy, but you're, you're there for the right reasons. Um, and finding a way where you can support yourself um, to get to get through, you know, until you're ready to perhaps make a different decision about about where you want to go in life. And, and of course, you know, it, it's not all about, you know, getting to that end game, is it? It is about mm. being yourself in that relationship. Yeah. It's interesting, isn't it? it? It is interesting, those cultural, cultural conditioning that, that we've had and you know we're of a similar age so yeah it was all the you know I remember as a little girl watching all the black and white movies silver screen where where the ladies went out and shopped for beautiful things and and the men were all chivalrous and it was yeah it was so lovely but in reality that's not what life's like it's not what life's like when you've got a small baby being sick all over you and then you've got to go to work and all those types. it's not like that is it no um and whilst we have moved on dramatically there's still some of that those role stereotypes really ingrained isn't there um, yeah. and certainly certainly maybe um for couples of a of a certain age maybe younger generations uh, where you know we've got real shifts in the view of gender maybe it's different for younger generations but certainly you know men and women of a certain age maybe 40s 50s 60s it, it, it's perhaps still very much ingrained in in, a, in what we've learned from our upbringing i do think um i mean i still see it in young relationships mm. um you know in some relationships you say not all the same and i think the thing is once you um <clears throat> what you know it's about understanding how we work as human beings and i remember saying to my daughter before she got married just make sure it's right because when you get married somehow the dynamic shifts Mm. um all the you know and it's it's all subconscious stuff isn't it um he your husband will then somehow subconsciously go back to what his parents marriage was like mm. and that's quite often when people you know get married they suddenly think he's changed you know mm. and it, it, it's, it's it's in our psyche sometimes and, and we just need to be aware of that guys need to be aware of that too you know that that plays out in us um so it's as I say, I'm really passionate about helping people understand how they work so that they can think, hang on a minute. No, that's not it's not how I want to be. You know, let, let's yeah. really look at it, you know. And I guess that, that doesn't just go for for, you know, male female relationships. It goes for any relationships, yeah. doesn't it? You know, any any uh, any combination of relationships that, you know, once you're in a committed relationship, things maybe you become a little bit complacent. Um, and, you know, regardless, regardless of whether you're in a same sex relationship or a, a male female relationship, you are still got those um, conditioning from what your parents were like, yeah. regardless, regardless. So that, I think that's quite, quite interesting to see how that plays out in how we, we play that out in our, in our relationships going forward. So Definitely. having gone on this journey and obviously you now you say you're remarried happily remarried and you're doing this work with with other women mm. what impact does that have on you and your own personal growth and your own personal relationship well I'm always in awe 
of my clients and um, they quite often teach me things too so I'm always learning and growing but one of one of the key points that I did did learn um, probably a couple of years ago was um, I have a like a take-in form when I take an, on a new client and one of the questions on the form is tell me what you love about yourself <clears throat> and so many women look at me like are you mad what what are you asking me that question you know I, I can't answer that question and I thought then ha ha you know we really need to be working on this so mm. yeah they're, they're teaching me all the time it is a two-way thing it's um it's very rewarding is there perhaps something that you know if we go back to maybe more traditional roles and not all relationships are set up like this that often women you know they they more often than not they will have children and continue to work and continue to do a lot of the homemaking as well and that's not always the case you know there are lots of modern husbands sure. and partners out there but you know if we if we look at the more traditional roles that they, they they're juggling all of these things they're spinning all of these plates as you say and then maybe the children go off to university and they leave home and they've had this identity for all of these years and all of a sudden they're, they're like what is my identity who am I even yeah. now and that's what happened to me you yeah, know that was my story because I mean I, you know, as I say, I, I believed in this fairy tale that if I'd be a good girl, you know, everything would be wonderful. And I was a good girl, um, but and I wanted children. So I had my three children and they were my, you know, my, my world and my focus. I think women, you know, and that's where the relationships can sometimes get into trouble because women are too focused on their children. Um, whereas you've got to get a balance, haven't you? Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> but when I grew up, um, and, and started to, you know, to fly the nest, I suddenly had this sense of, oh, my God, what do I do now? This is all I ever aspired to. You know, mm. this is all I ever wanted. What? Oh, I really have to need to have a think about this. What the hell am I going to do with the rest of my life? Yeah, that empty nester syndrome. It, it can be a really crucial time, can't it? Well, in men and women's lives, but I yeah. think particularly women's life. Um, what, what do I do now? What? What? Yeah. What? Who am I now? What's my role now? Even if they have a career, um, you know, uh, it, it's still a, a huge part of, uh, of their identity. So um, moving on to something else. Um, obviously, I introduced you at the beginning as an author. So tell us about your, your writing. Thank you. So um, I published a book a couple of years ago um, called Create More Time for You and Live an Amazing Life. And um, it was, you know, on the same theme of what we've already been talking about. But it's also, um, it's, a, it's a coaching book. So if, if some women perhaps aren't sure about coaching or can't, you know, um, um, access coaching at, at that particular moment in time for whatever reasons, um, it's a chance to um, see what coaching is like. But it mm. also helps you because I am asking questions, coaching questions to help people find their own answers for them um, mm. now it, it is aimed at women but interestingly enough um a guy on amazon uh, on um linkedin um bought a copy of the book and he gave me a great review and he said i want you to read this book to see what women were being told he said and it really is a good book and actually it does apply to men too the questions yeah. that are in there you know do apply to men too so i thought that was brilliant that really that really did um light me up that did yeah yeah and so what's next penny what what is what you're working on now and what are your aspirations for the future so i'm writing my autobiography believe it or not because <laughs> i do believe that will help other people help other women too but also um i'm launching um my signature program next week um which is a one-to-one -one coaching program that's um sort of takes you through the process of where you know where you are and where you want to be and just um it's um so the process is um clarity vision growth and then progress mm. so I'm, I'm launching that next week which i'm really excited about um yeah and i must get my autobiography finished because i started it a while ago yeah. and um 
I must need I need to get back to it <laughs> it's quite a cathartic experience isn't it mm. once you get into writing your autobiography I did start mine some years ago it's still not finished yet I'm, I'm, I'm kind of thinking I've got a few more years yet left yet I mean I'm, a lot of famous people do about two or three don't they you know because they're yeah. still quite young when they start it but it is very cathartic experience writing like I that think, I think also what I'm sort of holding back on is because it I've got children and grandchildren and they might read it so I'm uh, you know I'm I'm sort of not quite ready yet I think to mm. um to put it out there but um, I when the time is right I'll give it to them to read first yeah and, and then make a decision you know because it's their life too isn't it you know absolutely absolutely and we are all connected I know the other thing that you've been working on recently is around 28 days manifesting is that right yeah, so I um, facilitate um, Rhonda Burns' 28 Days of Magic, which is mm. a daily gratitude practice um, um, in all areas of your life. And I, I thought particularly January would be a very good time to do it because January is a tough month anyway. And then, you know, not to even mention about the pandemic. But, um, yeah, so it's a daily gratitude practice that I facilitate in a closed woman's group. Mm. Um, and we're having some great results and we're having a lot of fun with it. Um, yeah it's it's really really an honor to be able to deliver that to them and I do it myself as well each time and each time new things come for me so you know I'm sharing the journey with everybody it's fabulous isn't it you, you know it's it's in the giving that we receive isn't it absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. so as I ask all of my guests uh, the 10 million dollar question is what is your top tip for life Penny learn to love yourself it's not, not a narcissistic kind of love. I'm talking about a very grounded, um, you know, compassionate kind of self-love. self love. Self -love. Mm -hmm. And, it, you know, we can't love anybody else until we can truly love ourselves, can we? It feeds into all your relationships. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's no good looking to other people to fulfill you. You've got to do that for yourself and then you can come whole to, you know, to another person to share that love. Yeah, and walk alongside them. It's a, it, it builds a much more um, healthy relationship with whatever relationship it is because you're yeah. walking alongside them uh, rather than being dependent or in some codependency. You yeah. know, you're walking alongside somebody on the journey, which is just beautiful, isn't it? So I yeah. love that top tip. Thank it's you. been an absolute pleasure chatting with you today, thank you. Penny. Um, thank you so much. Thank you, Lisa. <laughs>